My name's Edward Hall and this is The Haunted Fish Tank. The show that will bring to your living room the programmes you should be watching and the ones you wish you hadn't. For the next 30 minutes we will bring you more entertainment than you'd get watching the footballing fundamentalist Glenn Hoddle squirm his way through a post-match press conference. And to prove it, here's a taster of what's on our smorgasbord. He's not here, is he? How much do you hate these minutes? If it's now, give it the money myself. Okay, Daisy, now can you walk right into that into that rake and smash your head in it? Go on, do that. Well, I mean, Daddy's not like other fathers. I mean, he's so possessive, he never takes his eyes off me. It depends on if you have to pay for weight, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Aye, worth the, the weight in gold, I don't know, I don't know, you know? <laughs> I don't know. That was great. But first, last week, Channel 4 were forced to pull the documentary Daddy's Girl when it was revealed they had been part of a hoax. A featured couple turned out to be boyfriend and girlfriend, not father and daughter. We've managed to obtain an exclusive clip, and in fairness to the company that made it, it's easy to see how they were taken in. Well, I mean, Daddy's not like other fathers. I mean, he's so possessive, he never takes his eyes off me. And, like, if I have a boyfriend, he comes to the nightclubs and he batters the shit out of him. And sometimes I think he behaves more like a lover than a father. Don't you, Daddy? Don't you, Daddy? Yeah. Yeah. Easy mistake to make. Well, the nights are getting shorter and the autumn schedule's just been unleashed. So last week's TV was packed fuller than a gladiator's jockstrap. Here's some of the best and worst of what you should have been watching. And this horrible streak of white piss had walked through the door with ginger hair, glasses on, two balloons and a thong. I mean, everything by blackheads in the spots. You know, it's just not nice, is it? Love theory. Apart from the new series of TFI, Chris Evans came in for some stick with ex-workmates exposing how bad he was to work with. Well, I never. Future exposés on This Wonderful Life will reveal that Julian Clare is a bit camp, Hail and Pace aren't funny, and EastEnders is becoming a rest home for past their primetime entertainers. Ant and Deck kicked off their new Saturday morning show, SMTV, which runs for a whole year. At least it'll keep them out of the recording studio. And Chris Tarrant wants to make you a millionaire. The show which started last Friday runs for 10 consecutive days and is set to give away the most lucrative prize on television. Let's hope it has more success than that other big prize show, Raise the Roof. Moving on. An important anniversary gripped the nation this week. One that had everybody remembering the couple who made the country openly cry. Yes, this morning is ten years old. Judy Finnegan and Richard Maidley have finally paid off the interest-free credit of their sofa and returned with a new series of groundbreaking daytime television. They certainly didn't spare any expense with the opening. If you didn't see it, here's what you missed. Hello. Hi. Good morning. morning. Um, nice to see you again. Here we go again. You can't see them. No, I In fact, you can't see anything this Sounds morning. Sounds like a very bad joke. I can't hear properly no, no. Um, because I've forgotten my earpiece and um, I've broken my contact lens. So. <laughs> <laughs> which one? Which one's working? Um, that one. That, that, that looked good. Just, just do the whole show. Like <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. It's good to be back with you. And guess what? This is, hence this horrible thing here. It's, not it's, not <laughs> it's awful. It is actually officially this morning's tenth year. Tenth year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, if you must. <laughs> if you must. 
if you must. All we need now is dancing girls. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Yes. Yeah. That was great. At last week's TV Quick Awards, Richard and Judy were only just pipped at the post for Best Entertainment Presenters by Denise Van Outen and Johnny Vaughan. We were there and spoke to some of the jewels in TV's crown. Also present, Ainsley Harriet and Les Dennis. Every year it seems to come around a little bit quicker, doesn't it? Yes, folks, the TV Quick Awards has arrived again. And here it is in all its marvellous glory. There's a presenter there working the screen like a madman. There's a guy there doing whatever he does and what he chooses to do over a weekend. Look, there's... Martine McCutcheon stomping in on our introduction. But she's irrelevant now because she's on EastEnders a lot of times. I'm only on once a week, so this is my shot. Anyway, we're going to go in there, have a lot of fun with these people, see what they're genuinely like, and see if they're in touch with us. What animal do you hate the most, though? Uh, I'm not too thrilled with spiders, I tell like you. So well, there's I... an injured spider in there. Why don't you just be in a kind of way rooting for the spider to go? If there's an injured spider. If there's a god in the world, you've got to be thinking, I hope that spider falls by the wayside. Who do you hate on TV that's here? Oh, this I've probably... just got here, so I, I don't know. I'll tell you what, Ainsley's here. Uh, is he? Hi, Ainsley. Uh, he's not here, is he? Yeah. Is he? How much do you hate Les Dennis? If it's there, I'll give it the money myself. myself. <laughs> there he is. My image. Les Dennis. <laughs> Hey, what do you think? Am I more gorgeous? <laughs> what celebrities do you really want to slam the door in the face of when they're coming through? None of them. None of them? Shut up, be honest. If you saw Vanessa Feltz coming through the door and you suddenly felt whack and <laughs> slammed it right in her face. Do you think Ainsley Harris is a bit of an idiot? Actually, I did a bit of work with him and he's all right. Who is he? I didn't like him before I met him. I met him. I don't know if this will go out in order of the interview. I met him, I thought he was an absolute tit. I don't like doing interviews and I've done them. Sorry. Oh, that's a nice one. I'm sorry, that'd be rude. Honestly. That's great, that's great. That's it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the TV Quick Award. Celebrities have worked years to achieve this thing, and I am holding it in my hands, and I've merely done a year. It looks like a fun bunch. You've got Pauline Quirk and Ray Winston sat on the table. You've got Emma Noble, James Major. I'm just getting a panic, you see, because I can't remember anybody's name and I get in such a panic that I can't even remember the person that I'm with and then you've got to introduce everybody and then you wonder why people on these dudes call each other darling. <laughs> can't remember each other. If you look at this one, this looks like the fun table to be on. You've got Jonathan Ross, who I like. You've got Robson Green, who could be shot if I really care. Millions and millions of women, the world wide... Name them! ...would be pleased I want names and addresses. My grand making it for up. one. He is none other than mm. one half of Jerome. He's Robson. Mm -hmm. Robson Green. Mm -hmm. What the hell have you got there? What's this all about? What have you won? I've won a, an award for touching evil. Have you, you, been, have you been drinking, Robson? No. Very <laughs> good. Have you? I don't like my staff to drink. You've got Sid Owen, Patsy Farmer, Ross Kemp, Marty McCutcheon. Can you ask for more fun than that? I think you can, can't you? What would evil feel like if you were to touch it? Spongy. <laughs> this is the award that I wish never existed in the history of television. It is the best TV cook award, sponsored by Chicken Tonight. Now, Lisa Riley looks like she's had a few Chicken Tonight dinners. She's going to be presenting the award. There she is there. OK, I'm nervous as hell, because I don't want Ainsley Harris to win a bloody bee. And the winner of best TV cook is Ainsley Harris. <laughs> Fans of TV Quick magazine? Yeah, by every. Is it weekly or How much does it cost? Uh, big fans, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How much does it cost, Liz? Um, less than a pint of milk. Uh, 47 pounds. Oh. Angela Griffin from Coronet Street, I mean, cost 47 p. Right. How much do you, you pay 40 p? She pays 47 p. Yeah, I must have a cheap on news agents, you know. I sort of like paying installments. How much does it cost? You 35 say, p. 35 p. So you're not really a big fan, are you? No. Honesty is a virtue. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the TV Quick Awards. The cost of the magazine is 60p. No celebrity knew the price, yet they all turned up to the party. You know, the general public can take the things they see on TV a little bit too far. This week saw Doctor Who nut Mark Gower exposed for sleeping with his darling. Mark said, it's arm moved once and gave me the fright of my life. The next night, it moved eight or nine times, and it was great. 
We couldn't get Mark out of bed, so with me is Dr. Hugh enthusiast John Field. How are you, John? I'm all right. How are it's, you? Well, it's a pleasure to see you here, John. You've brought along, dare I say, your perversions. Perversions? In a, in a strange way, to me, as a non-enthusiast, they are. Can you battle that? I can battle that right enough if you're Katie Manning. She did pose nude with one of them, if that's the type of perversion you want. I don't know what that was all about there, John. That sounds frightening. What I want to talk about is this Dalek here. Now, Daleks were supposed to be the ultimate weapon, weren't they? The ultimate nemesis to uh, the Doctor. If I ran upstairs, ran quickly behind it and pushed it over, gone. End of series. In fact, end of ultimate weapon. Not quite as easy as that. For one, a Dalek offers on a hover principle, so pushing it over isn't that easy. It was never that easy on the set to start with. And besides, that method for destroying a Dalek was only used in the later years as a they quick get They got wise get to it. Well, they got wise to everything. You see, a Dalek can actually go upstairs. In uh, Willie Martin's day in the chase, they materialised on the Mary Celeste. Some of them were on the main deck and some of them were on the Pope deck. Now, the Pope deck can only be accessed by ladders. How did they get up there? It's just the BBC prop man stuck him up there. Ah, not quite right. In the later, last episode called Remembrance of the Daleks, a Dalek was seen to hover upstairs in pursuit of the Doctor. John, I think you're building your part up there a little bit too much. These things, just look at it. It's like a rock. It's like a post box. Is th you try punching it. Punching it? You try punching it. All right. <laughs> Precisely. It does hurt, doesn't it? But Doctor never went anywhere with fists, did he? No, it was better to run sometimes to get out of the way. If they used the ray gun, that was it. Now, what's this guy all about? I mean, to me, he is, you are genuinely more frightening than that thing there. Um, what was he called? Was he a dangerous lad? He was a dangerous lad. He was a Zygon. A what? A Zygon. OK. Uh, what they did, they actually um, nestled in the bottom of Loch Ness and they sent the Skraken out, which was the Loch Ness Monster, basically, to destroy certain installations in the North Sea. And the ultimate call was to destroy the government. And the Doctor came across this because he was summoned by the Brigadier to uh, go to Scotland and help him out. John, thank you very much. But there we go. John, come back in part two when we will show you how to make a satellite smart card. Please come back.